So, we are in the middle of a three-part series of the three poisons that the Buddha called. I started last week with naivete or ignorance or you can't teach stupid. You can't fix stupid. No, you can teach stupid, but you can't fix stupid. Anyhow, this week, it's funny, is two weeks ago we knew that Kristen was going to give this talk. Um, and ironically, when she was here, I can't remember, a month or two ago, um, I was getting a, a download of about this much of a talk, and I didn't understand. I wasn't getting the complete talk, and we went to Spirit and found out that, oh, it's because I only do a little bit, and then she does the rest. And it's been kind of fun that way, a fun discovery of, of how Spirit is uh, enabling us to work together. Um, so now this week is on aversion. Avoidance, the Buddha would, some ancient texts would talk about hatred, but the things that basically you're afraid of and you don't want to embrace. And this is what Rev. Kristen is going to talk about. Here's the three week series. Next week I'll be speaking on attachments as, as I know it and understand it today. But one more thing, about five years ago, the first time I went back to Unity Village, my first Sunday there, I met Rev. Kristen and her son Cody. And, um, and it's been a wonderful professional relationship ever since. And then things just changed last fall. So I'm very happy about that. So Reverend Kristen. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. What a joy to be here with you. I just want to take a moment and connect my heart with yours and welcome you here into this space that you create in the sacred energy of Unity Church of El Cajon. And um, know that we create an energy field of love and a space that we get to explore in and grow in and be in. And I want to welcome all those who are listening online or will listen online um, to feel the love of this community. And we welcome you here to Unity Church of El Cajon. And I'd like to begin in prayer. I love to begin everything I do in prayer. So if I could just take a short moment to dedicate this time with you in the energy of the highest good for every heart and mind and soul that hears these words, that they may be in service to your highest good. Make me an instrument, Lord. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you. Amen. So, today we get to talk about aversions. And I forgot the little clicker thing. <laughs> Here we go. So. Um, I have the joy of looking into those things that are slippery and they kind of go away when you want to work on them. I was working on putting the talk together and it reminded me of Mercury. I don't know if anyone's had the experience of seeing what Mercury operates like. You kind of like try and touch it and it moves away from you. And um, that is what I kind of thought of. And I wouldn't suggest that you go and touch mercury, and if you do, wash your hands. <laughs> but it, it felt like a great analogy to um, look at what we're going to be talking about today, because who wants to face the things you want to avoid? I don't. I really didn't want to talk about this today. Um, actually, I wanted to name this talk, Dropping the Dread. Dropping the dread factor is really what I want to talk to you about today because have you ever stepped into something even as joyful as a vacation and you feel the joy of wanting to do it but there's this little part of you that's dreading, I'm going to have to take care of all the mail, I'm going to have to get my suitcase out, I'm going to pack my clothes and then I'm going to have to catch up on my work when I get back. You know, there's this little push-pull energy sometimes in our lives and um, how can we drop the push or the, the, the thing that pulls us back. How can we look at that and, and face that in a way that will help us to purify our energy to where we can just open up our arms and say yes to life. Yes, here I am, fully and freely, and I'm here to experience the fullness, the wholeness of who I am. So how can we drop the dread factor? Well, I have something to confess to you, and that's that my ego um, Brian, Reverend Brian, has often talked about um, naming your ego to kind of help it feel like a pet, something that you can care for and take care of and, and get an identity around and help to work with. Well, my ego's name is Polly because my ego is built after Pollyanna. Did anybody see the movie Pollyanna? 
Yeah, okay. Well, we play the glad game. <laughs> the glad game is um, the Pollyanna looks at everything that's going on, and if there's something icky going on, we're going to find the good. We're going to find the thing that makes you happy. We're going to focus on an affirmation, or we're going to focus on the happy factor, and not look at the unhappy factor. Not look at the sadness, not look at the difficulty, not look at the struggle of life. And there is a bit of that that's kind of new thought that I kind of like because it's natural to my nature is to look at the good. But, but I've realized over time you can't avoid this. We can't avoid this, although I'm very, very good at it. And I think that's why Reverend Brian thought that I'd be really good to talk about what we avoid in, in today's talk. But um, we realized last night, as I was working on this, that he's the master of avoiding because he avoided doing this talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I am honored. Please know that I am very, very honored to be with you here today and to look at these things because they have gifts in them. The things that we don't want to look at bless us. Um, so let's look at some of the ways in which this operates. Okay, we're putting this in the context of Buddhism, but it is also in every faith, every faith tradition, including Christianity. Um, it's, it's the three poisons, the th three things that pull us away from our true nature. And um, the primary causes that keep us as human beings trapped in a mundane experience. See, if I only focus on this part, this part's operating even though I don't want to look at it. So how can we embrace that? The three poisons are ignorance, and it is the root of the other two, and the root from which all other things stem. So when we're ignorant of what we're avoiding, we're subject to it. It's operating in the background, and we don't even know it. So by today's talk, by our journey here together today, we get to build the courage, the strength, and the energy to look at in a fun way, hold with me here, because we're not going to be all drudgery, it's going to be fun, um, at how we can work with those aspects of ourselves that are in fear. Um, that root of ignorance which builds aversions uh, are said to create other mental states that cloud our mind and our alertness. And we don't really want that. We want to be free. In Western psychology, there's an, a way that we've named these three root poisons, which are narcissism, anger, and desire. And those sound like a lot of fun, don't they? <laughs> so why do we want to face these things? Why on earth would we want to go where no one wants to go? And that is because we want to be free. Deep deep, deep within your soul, deep within who you are. There is this essence of who you are that wants to break free, that doesn't want to be bound. And so we're here today to help untether that soul, to unchain the truth of who you are. All right, so now for a fun way of looking at this together. Um, Okay, we have a video that we want to share with you, and that's a little kitten on the screen there. You can't see it very well right now. But this is a perfect embodiment of what is the dynamics that happen with our ego, with our higher self, and with the ultimate reality of who we are. And let's enjoy watching this little kitten deal with a big, scary thing.
I love that. I love it. I hope you can see it. It's just so funny. Now, this little kitten is on the floor of life, and, and, and that kitten represents our ego, my Polly, your, I don't know, fill in the blank. And, and sometimes it comes across something new it's never experienced before, and it's freaked out. How do I deal with this? I'm afraid it's going to roll over me. It's big and it's hairy and I don't understand it yet. So, so that kitten level represents our ego and how we sometimes interact with those things that we don't yet understand, but we're trying to be brave in the midst of our fear. We're trying the best we can. Now, there's one level of our consciousness. Another level of our consciousness is the filmer that says, my gosh, this is so funny, we gotta pull out the camera and capture this on film because I know what that tennis ball is for. I know how to use a tennis ball and it's fun and it's just hilarious to see this little tiny thing think that it's this big scary thing. And um, can be the witness observer, can observe that kitten. And we're gonna talk more about how to observe that kitten in our own lives. Now there's another level of consciousness here which is the field, the room, the, the, the entity of life itself, the context, the structure from which all of this unfolds. And that would be the ultimate, I am that I am, that when we finally let go of the ego, we dissolve to into in its entirety. And we, we are the energy, the essence of God itself. Now, there's different levels of understanding here. And the poly in me would really like to run like the little kitten out of the room and like run away from the big fat scary thing and would like to focus in on that witness observer almost as an escape, as an escape out of what the human experience is experiencing. Now, here's where I get really real and I get really gutsy too. <laughs> About three and a half years ago, I had a diagnosis of something that nobody wants to hear. And um, my kitten on the dance floor of life was hunching its back and hopping all over and <laughs> looking at it and trying to get my arms around it and figure it out. And um, there's four levels of consciousness that I want to bring into our context today, and that's to me, by me, through me, and as me. When you first get handed a diagnosis, you feel like it's hand handed to you not something you really want to look at. And so I didn't stay there long. That's kind of a victim mentality in that you feel subject to. The kitten is, you know, being tortured by the big, fat, hairy, yellow ball that wants to roll over it and kill it. You know, that's the way it sees it, and that's the way it feels about it. Um, but there's another level of awareness, which is by me. And um, so three and a half years ago, when I got this diagnosis, I was like, oh, ha, what am I going to do? And um, so I did some research, I talked to people, I interviewed people who had gone through similar things, and I decided that my method of dealing with this was going to be alternative, because I have a very strong faith. And I believe that that which gives me life is in charge of this life, and that I wanted to embrace every healthy mean to deal with this that I could every, every way in which I could deal with this in a healthy way so I became raw vegan um, I took classes on how to not cook and um, I worked with a chemistry of my body to move it from an alkaline or an acidic state into an alkaline state so that it's healthy and wholesome. I grew wheatgrass and juiced wheatgrass. I learned about juicing and smoothies and um, I did skin brushing and oil pulling and uh, let me see, meditation and prayer, uh, the prayer the prayer code, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've, done it. <laughs> I've done it. And that is the by me state. I'm working with this big fuzzy hairy ball by my own wisdom, by my own understanding by my human level of consciousness. And I want to pause right here because, you know, we're all in this together. We're all in these physical bodies together. And there's different things that are big, hairy balls that create fear within us. 
And I'm wondering what might be something within your own life that you work with, that your kitten is out on the floor and hunching its back and running away. And sometimes seeing the witness observer and then it goes, oh yeah, I'm looking my, <laughs> working my hand, I'm, I'm cool, I'm doing it, it's all right. But it really isn't, it isn't all right. It's freaked out by what's going on. Can you begin to look at whatever that is with the compassion of the witness of observer? Can you begin to be comforting and kind and compassionate to that very scared little kitten? Um, when Brian and I were working with this, I gotta move the story forward a little bit. Um, it came a point in the diagnosis where I was realizing the next right thing was to get it removed physically, which is beyond my control. That's not gonna be done by me. <laughs> and you wanna know something? It was kind of nice to know that I didn't have to do it alone. That there are people in this world who know how to deal with these things in a way that I don't know how to deal with them, and that they can. They can. And that's where we stop isolating and we begin embracing a larger me, a larger me. Because there's this through me, through me state. There's a to me, there's a by me, and then there's a through me. And I'm gonna capital M that me. Because it is the witness observer. It is the, the perspective that films the kitten on the floor. It is the greater wisdom and awareness of the doctors, of the nurses, of the technicians, of the scanning people. It's the wisdom that's available to us outside of my awareness of how to deal with these things. And it can be supportive to us. Matter of fact, you all are a part of that. You all are a blessing to me in this journey, as I know you've held me in prayer. And I know that every single one of those kind words, those conscious words spoken on my behalf, has helped to lift me in this journey and fill this journey with grace and with peace beyond comprehension. And you are here for one another to do that very same thing. Through you, through us, something greater than only me alone. And it's when we can become compassionate with that human condition, when we can love that kitten on the floor. You can't ignore it. See, we want to ignore it. We want to ignore that there's something going on. I want to ignore that there's something going on. But you can't because we are a whole being. This, this is a full package here. And if we don't address it, there is an energy field going out into the universe that is operating even though I may not want to address it. So when my Polly ignores the owl, ignores the difficulty, I'm not expressing as a whole unit. I'm not expressing as a whole human. And if we don't look at those things, if we can't go on to that floor and be with the kitten, you gotta be with her. She's scared. She's hopping around. She's doing everything that she can with the best of her knowledge to deal with her fear and to make good choices and to make strong choices. But there's a perception of something out there that's not true. There, it's, it's not its fullness. It's not its understandable essence. And yet, if we can hold that being, and I think of a parent, like a parent of a two-year-old who's throwing a fit who's scared out of its wits. And if that loving parent can hold that child long enough, that child's gonna begin to relax in that parent's arms and ultimately will probably fall asleep on its shoulder. Can we look at the things we wanna avoid in our life, be real with them, authentic, share them, and hold them in a space of loving compassion until they calm down? through me, through the community, through all of the wisdom, all of the life that is here to support us as a whole human being. And ultimately, if we can do that, it begins to shift the fear into a, an awareness of, oh, this tennis ball could be fun. It can be actually fun, <laughs> eventually. An awesome awareness of the final level of it which is as me, 
as me. Suddenly, when I dissolve, when that ego realizes it can relax and it doesn't have to be fully in charge, I can begin to dissolve and surrender the ego into the very essence of my soul, into the very eternal nature of who I am. So I'm going to advance the slide, if I can. There we go. And share with you some quotes that came in a book study that I was involved with uh, from Dr. David Hawkins. And it comes from the book, I, Reality and Subjectivity. And it, I got to read the section on fear. Isn't God good? <laughs> Thank you, God. The first quote that comes is um, about why does that kitten freak out? Why is she scared? It's because the most prevalent conscious fear is that the physical survival the most prevalent conscious fear is that of physical survival because the body is believed to be the primary reality of life. Have any of you ever gone out of body? Yeah. Have any of you had a near-death experience? Yes. You know, you know the truth of this, that this physical thing that I get to move right now is pretty cool and it's nice but it's not the essence it's not who I am and that what motivates that what animates that what looks through your eyes at me right now is an energy and an essence that is eternal it will never die it will never die it is the fabric the essence the life the vitality the strength the peace of God itself it is your conscious awareness and it exists outside of this body. It's in this body right now, and when we're done with it, we'll lay it down, but you will go on. I guarantee it. You will go on. Um, and from this awareness of the kitten on the floor, it just thinks, I gotta protect. I gotta, I gotta make a good decision in this state of fear because this is all there is. This is it, is my physical awareness. And it believes that all, oops, sorry, guys, I went way too far. It believes that all that is, is valued and it has to be defended. Therefore, danger lurks everywhere. The ego is ever watchful of every slight slur or encroachment on its turf. You see, this ego thinks it has to protect us, it has to take care of us, that's all there is, and it's not true. It isn't true. Jesus Christ said that the last thing is that we need to surrender is the negativity of fear. Is the negativity of fear. So when we can be with that kitten, when we can love on that presence that is afraid of that big hairy thing out there, then it can begin to shift. We surrender that into something larger than ourselves. The common, sorry, this thing is clicking, but it's not clicking. Awesome, would you do that for me, hon? Thank you. Um, the common element of most fears is that they are based on the illusion that happiness is dependent on an external and therefore vulnerable. In other words, I've got to predict and control something out, say, out there so I can be happy, so that I'll be okay, so that I'll be safe. That's the illusion. It's never out there. The cessation of fear is actually the result of learning that the source, hear, hear me, this is what you came for today. <laughs> this is it. The source of happiness and joy is from within you. You don't have to go outside and get it, and the ego doesn't have to acquire it, and doesn't have to manage or control. It doesn't have to predict. It, it stems from recognizing that it is the source, and that the source is the joy of one's own existence, which is continuous. Who you are is eternal. And as you lay down that which is not you, as you lay down and surrender the fear that is about the world, you surrender into something larger than yourself, which is your true self, the larger self. And by embracing the 
energy of that kitten, we don't avoid it. And by not avoiding it, it doesn't come out sideways in addiction or aversions. We don't avoid what we're wanting to look at through overworking or through sports or through alcohol or through overeating. We're able to look at it directly and focus on it, be compassionate with it, pick up that kitten, pick up that child within us that's afraid. Love on it, hold it, transmute that energy until it can be a part of you, as you, through you and as you, supported by the love of those around you and the wisdom of those around you. You see, it's a whole system approach. It's a whole being. And if we don't approach those things we try to avoid, that energy is going out anyway into the universe and attracts to us things that we don't want. Matter of fact, I'm going to be really real with you for a moment here. I, my whole modus operandi for life is to be safe. I want to be safe. I had a tough childhood. And I realized that if I was perfect, I could maybe stay below the radar and be safe and not get hit and not get hurt. That was my way of being. It's my way still as an adult. I'm not perfect. I do strive for excellence, but I'm not perfect. And to be authentic with you here today takes my life to a whole new level. In service to you, hopefully, I prayerfully submit that in some way, something that is said here today touches your heart and somehow makes a difference so that I get to live my life purpose which is to be the fullest expression of the potentiality of my spirit here on earth. I don't have to be safe. I don't have to hide. I don't have to do this all on my own. I can be vulnerable. I can share this with you. You can have compassion for me, and I can have compassion for you. We are not in this alone, nor were we ever meant to be. We are here to walk this journey together. It is a homo sapien journey, and it's a homo spiritus journey. The truth is, we are spirit. We will return to that from which we've come. And we get to journey and love on each other along the way. All right, so let's move forward. What do we get to take away from here today? That ignorance is the root poison from which aversion arises. And we get to be real with that. We get to look at that. We get to be free from it. And the next takeaway is we face our aversions to be free from them rather than controlled by them, either on our own unconscious behavior or the energy patterns in the field that we send out into the world itself. I don't have to worry about being safe. I am safe. I don't have to worry about looking perfect. I am an expression of God, and so are you, and that is more than enough. It's always been more than enough. Maintain awareness as the witness observer while being compassionate with the ego. It's a both and. It's this level of awareness of the kitten and it's the awareness of the observer filming whatever's going on in your life. Embrace them and know that who you are is actually the field in which it's all transpiring and recognize that the source of joy is your own existence, which is continuous. Namaste, beloved friends. I celebrate our journey together. <laughs>